Hey everyone, Game Park here, and today what I thought I'd do was an unboxing for a recently acquired purchase, and that is the Steam Deck. So as you can see, we have a very long box here, and we have a couple of things here on the side of the packaging of the box, which at first might seem kind of like standard fare for package warnings, but we can actually see the companion cube here. Um, the Steam Deck logo, I believe, is this one. And just a couple of funny things right here with like the, the package being delivered with a lot of love. But yeah, um, I thought I'd do an unboxing of the Steam Deck and maybe just doing kind of like a first impressions of the system itself. Um, I'll try and install a game and maybe play a little bit. So nothing too in-depth, but yeah, I thought it'd be cool to just kind of make a video of the Steam Deck. So... Without further ado, let's get right into it. Yeah, very unassuming box for the, the delivery, but let me go ahead and just cut along the, the opening right here. All right, and here we have what I've seen in a couple of other unboxings, um, which is just a lot of language for the top part, and then instructions right here. It says, uh, first step, you plug it in and then you power it on. So hopefully my extension reaches to the outlet behind me. But aside from that, we have the system itself here. Let's take a look at the side first. What do we have here on the left-hand side? Oh, um, I guess this is the, the power plug. Right? It says... Uh, Contents, yeah, power adapter. Okay, so let's go ahead and and do that one first. All right, and here we have the power outlet or the power plug. Um, looks very similar to like a Nintendo Switch power outlet. Here we have a couple of other things inside, but I believe. It's probably just going to be a instruction. I can't seem to. It's it's really stuck there behind this little white thing. I can't seem to grip it out. Let me just do it this way. Yeah. So this is just gonna be like a little manual about the power outlet in multiple languages. So nothing too exciting there. Well, here's the plug. Cool. I'll move that to the side. Take out our main console right here, which is the Steam Deck. Yeah, it's pretty big. So let's go ahead and just take it out of the, the plastic bag here. Move this one. It comes in this case, obviously. Which I believe the there's like a smaller one. Is it, It's not a 64 gig one, but it's like a, a really smaller size one. Oh, and it's got like this little lock here, so you know it, whether it's been uh, opened or not, I believe, right? Because, yeah, otherwise you can't do it, so you really gotta like dedicate yourself to it. But you know what? Well, screw it over here. Let's go ahead and see if my knife works, and if it doesn't, I'll grab something else. There we go. Valve. Now we can go ahead and open up the Steam Deck, and here it is. Look at this beast, dear lord. Is there stuff in here? And nope, this is just the, the case. But here we have the actual Steam Deck. I'm some stuff out of the way so we can just focus on this one right here but look at this oh my lord yeah it feels pretty good in the hands honestly the buttons the i was a little worried when i originally saw the um, videos for the steam deck and i thought that maybe like the right thumbstick would be a little too far away from the buttons but it's actually fairly easily accessible whether you're pushing the buttons or having to use the the joystick here, or the analog stick. Here we have a, a touchpad, the Steam, the Steam Deck button, 
D-pad, left stick menu. On the top we have L1, L2, the volume controls, the power. Let's see the back. On well, the bottom is just fairly, fairly blank like this. I believe this is the spot for the SD card. Here's the profile of it. Yeah, so it is very long, but it's got a decent weight that's not too heavy, but also obviously not too light. I don't think that's possible for this. And here we have valve branding with some R4, R5, L4, L5. So that's really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that the that this little warning thing over here set to plug it in, but let's just go ahead and plug and turn it on and see if there's any battery on the deck itself. So I'm pressing that for the first time. There might not be any power. I wonder if I just hold it, if that's gonna let it start. No, it's completely discharged. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in and then we'll come back right back to the Steam Deck. Give me a sec. All right, so I went ahead and just uh, plugged it in and pressed the power button and now we're getting the Steam Deck logo. I'm not exactly sure how long that's going to last during the boot up process. So it might take a little while or it might just be really short, but let's give it a second. All right, so that didn't take too long, but now we're here at the language selection screen. So we'll go ahead and, oh, I'm used to the switch pressing the further right button, but uh, here we have our standard time selection. After that, we have a couple of network settings. Once you pick your time zone, then you will be moved over to this screen, which actually installs Steam. So I believe that's doing that right now. And then we'll see what happens after this one. Alrighty, so I went through the setup process and just signed into my account. Um, it took a little while. I don't know. I had to actually restart the console because the installation just kind of stopped all of a sudden and it didn't look like it was going to be budging forward anymore so i just went ahead and restarted it and once i started back up i could see that my connection was a little more stable and then it finished the process but yeah once you sign in uh, that's the screen that you get after the installation of steam you get this uh i guess it logs you into your account which is funny because i i'm kind of covering this part here but uh it says that my steam deck is only going to be held less than a minute um and that i need to reserve it Otherwise, my reservation will be canceled, but I guess I never went ahead and looked at that message on my Steam account since then. I've been a little busy, so now I'm actually holding the Steam Deck, but I'm getting the message that, um, yeah, that I need to purchase it. So I'm covering the price because I, I don't want uh, people to uh, see that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, let me see how I can just, I'm just going to press the B button and dismiss it, but yeah. Alrighty, so here we have the main menu of the Steam Deck. Here's a couple of games that I played recently. So we have uh, Elder Scrolls Arena, Chex Quest, Team Sonic Racing, Counter Strike, Multi Blood Sonic, Shenmue. Oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> I completely forgot. One thing that I've always wanted on the Switch is the ability to play um, Shenmue. I really thought it was going to be ported to the Switch. But I guess not. So now I can play it officially. Although I do see that it says right here, um, it has like the Steam Deck. I'm getting notifications that it's not compatible or it won't play well. Let me see. Let's just go ahead and look into that. Game info. Does that mean it's completely? So I I remember reading whether there are games that everything can be installed on the Steam Deck, but it's just not going to be supported. But I believe it should still be playable. I don't know if there are games that are just so unplayable that it doesn't even let you install them, but we'll look into that a little later. Yeah, so let's go back into, how do I go back into like the main menu? I'm still a little, um, working my way around this but yeah I like the sound effects for for the Steam Deck oh it seems to have gotten stuck 
There we go. So if I press A, there we go. That was a little weird. But yeah, Counter Strike. You see how it has like that I right next to it? So if we go down to Game Info, it says Playable, but there are further details. So stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay. Let's. We're going a little too far here. Too far here. Little Nightmares, Battle Fantasia. Super Dimension Neptune, a whole ton of visual novels that I'm very interested in checking out because honestly, the best way to play visual novels is portably. So there's a ton of games I have. If my heart had wings, I have the game for the Switch. I have Muv Love for the PlayStation Vita. I played that for a while. So it's really cool to have a lot of these other games that did not have switch ports or don't have vita ports or other portable versions to finally be able to play them on steam and that's pretty much what i'm going to be using this for to be honest just playing a lot of those kind of casual like simple kind of games sonic cd uh melty blood you know that's that's fantastic i don't believe melty blood is on the switch so perfect time to do that you know team sonic racing is on the switch so i'm not like super motivated to install that one but other games like elder scrolls arena hey why not but yeah let's just go ahead and just test out a quick game I'll, you know what, let's do a smaller game so we can you know just feel it out so we'll do sonic cd here it's only 300 megabytes so let's go ahead and install it it says Valve is still learning about Sonic CD. They don't have further information regarding its compatibility, but let's see what it looks like. So here we'll go into the installation. I have to press download. Let's go ahead and start downloading it. Yeah, while well, this is installing, you know, uh, the whole system itself feels really nice in the hands. I don't feel like um, it's, even though it is at times comically large, I don't feel that it is uncomfortable in any sense. I'm not, it's not digging into like between my index and my middle fingers. Uh, I know that happens a lot with certain controllers or other handhelds. They just kind of like dig into your skin. And after a couple of minutes or a couple of hours playing it, you just kind of have to take a break because it does start hurting your hands. But at least the ridges here for the trigger buttons they are very soft uh, the plastic itself is really nice quality too and that's that's great you know I, I really like that so overall the build quality of the system itself feels really solid the analog sticks here feel really nice I honestly can't don't have any complaints as of right now you know this is my the first time I've ever held one the first time I've ever seen one in person and yeah so far experience is really good so Looks like Sonic CD just finished installing. Let's go ahead and get into that one. Make a selection to launch Sega CD, uh, video setup, or just play. You know what? I'm just gonna go as if it's just a regular console, not PC based or anything like that. Let's just see what it does with what it gives us. Okay, so here we have Sega, but nothing on the screen. That's probably what it's talking about when it gives you those little information notification so let's go ahead oh never mind this is starting speakers are really loud so that's good but no game so we're gonna have to go into the settings how can we change that view game details exit the game resume the game if we go further are there other options that let us change the settings so here we have sunny cd at the very top is settings for the system itself or for the game let's go back to the main menu and find a way to just exit the game here we go exit here yes let's confirm maybe if we start it up again is there a way to look at the settings before you actually launch the game so here we have play manage developer no so let's just go into it and hopefully oh well here's the settings for the game right here oh no um this is just steam input if we start the game play will it let us do the video setup here we go and then we have a uh, video mode so i guess i'll just have to click it myself 
let's do a low a very low resolution apply it and then we can exit Uh, confirm a the bottom button yeah so there are issues with certain games I mean it doesn't it's not even letting me exit I guess oh we have to apply a windowed one but how do I exit you see what I mean so maybe we applied it so maybe we'll just have to exit through the main system itself go back to play hopefully the video settings stay saved so we can just jump into the game will this fix our video issue no it's still the same thing so yeah same games are just not compatible it's kind of a shame right i would have really had hope for all games to be com compatible but i'll look into that later on let's go ahead and exit maybe i'll go ahead and install that melty blood because I do like playing fighters. So we'll go ahead and install Melty Blood. This is 2.25 gigs. So if this takes a little while, I'll jump right back into it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and install Melty Blood. Alrighty, and it looks like it is finalizing the installation or at least the download for Melty Blood. Hopefully in just a second, it'll be ready to give us the play option. There we go. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This game will use the official layout of the gamepad. Let's check it out. Melty Blood, one of my favorite fighters. So here we have the start. It says press start. French bread, type boon. into the game itself yeah and the quality of the speakers is really nice too I can feel like that bassy <laughs> the, ba the bass is actually like kind of giving a certain feel when I'm holding it in my hands, which is very nice. I don't mind it. All right, let's go ahead and skip the intro. Here we are. Press any button. Let's just get into arcade and get a quick round in. Lots of characters, let's just jump into one of them. I'm a fan of green, so let's go with the green style. Let's just go ahead and press start. Get into a match. Really quick. Yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good to be honest. There's really no major complaints. I guess I do feel maybe that I have to be very a little mindful. Not not very, but a little mindful of my my thumb on the D-pad because sometimes I do since it is on the very edge. And if I'm moving, um, let's say forward like this, I have to make sure that my my finger doesn't completely like slip off the edge. You know, for more intensive games like this where it does require precision but overall you know still doable still manageable so overall not bad but yeah you know that's actually gonna do it for our little unboxing and first impressions of the Steam Deck I I feel like I'm gonna really like this device it's super cool and uh, yeah it feels great in the hand good specs and I will 
you know, continue to check out all the games that I am able to purchase from Steam on the Steam Deck first because I just kind of like the accessibility and how easy it is to just jump into the games like that and install them. I don't have to take up space on my laptop or my desktop's hard drive, so that's fantastic. And I just kind of prefer, you know, having a dedicated console like this, even though it is based off, you know, PC architecture. But yeah. This is uh, the unboxing for the Steam Deck, first impressions. Oh, and there's a really quick one. Here we have a, you know, a size comparison. Maybe I'll put the Steam Deck up here and the Switch. So, I mean, yeah, this has been done many times before, but just to give you kind of like a little idea. I know it's a little angle, but the the with the Steam Deck being, you know, a little a little larger on the side, but overall not bad. Really, I really nice. Um, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm really gonna like that, but yeah, with all that being said, thank you all so, so much for watching. I appreciate all the continued support, and let me know if you picked up a Steam Deck, which one did you get? This is the 256 gigabyte model, I believe, the middle, the middle tier one, which I'm, it's plenty for me, because that's all I'm really gonna be doing, just playing a lot of Steam games on here, and yeah, it's beautiful, uh, really good design. Let me know if you picked one up. Leave me a like, subscribe if you like this content, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.